from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Likas Show. Excellent. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just want to take a minute here to thank all our friends in Portland who showed up at our Lister event on Friday at Barracuda. What a party that was uh how do you know it was a great party they ran out of beer this has happened to us a couple of times in the past they ran out they had to send a truck out to get more beer they ran out of beer it's absolutely amazing uh we had uh, an a-list talent there there were hot chicks and uh lots of nudity that's all i can tell you it was uh remarkable uh, one Portland listener called and talked to Dino and said it was the best party he'd ever been to. That's saying something. So many of you have called in to uh, say hi after our big party on Friday. And uh, my thanks to the people of Portland, not just for coming down to Barracuda, uh, but also our thanks to the folks at Max 910 for making it possible, and the folks at Miller Lite, and also uh, all the people who bought us drinks while we were in Portland there were many of you, too. You were too numerous to mention. <laughs> One place Gary and I went, we did not buy a single drink. It looked like we were double and triple fisting. It was out of control. So um, what can I say? Thank you for all of that. Now, uh, we will tell you soon coming up. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll save this till tomorrow. Uh, I'll go into it in detail. But uh, our upcoming trip to Seattle, I'll tell you all the details about that. And uh, the next event in Seattle, I'll just give you a little taste here. There will be no tickets required. It's first come, first served. Anybody can come. I'll tell you all about that. I will tell you, though, that uh, just like Portland, if you're a 9 or a 10, we got a lot of pictures also sent to us, and Gary had to uh, sort through all of these. Uh, but uh, if you're a, a Seattle 9 or a 10, we're not unrealistic about these things. Uh, you can email us uh, your photograph, and if you are a 9 or a 10, you will uh, get uh, backdoored into the event and... You'll get in regardless of whether it's overflowing, whether the crowd is overflowing. We'll get you in, and you can um, be with the band, if, uh, as it were. Okay, so uh, send your photograph, if you're a Seattle 9 or a 10, to uh, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And then uh, Gary will have the grueling task of uh, separating the wheat from the chaff, as it were. We've been to Seattle a lot of times to know what a Seattle 9 or a 10 looks like, so don't try to slide one bias. And we did get a picture already from a chick today who uh, said she was 21 and she was really hot, and she sent the picture. She had her hat, like, she was wearing a hat, and she had, like, pulled down over half of her face, and then her body was cut off at about the nipple. We could not see anything. So you have to send a photo that shows us more than just that little area there. We have to see, like, all of you. Because if you got a big caboose uh, pulling behind, it's just not going to work. But uh, tomorrow we'll tell you all the details of our big event in Seattle, okay? How many of you have seen this uh, reality show on Fox called The Swan? Have you seen this yet? A lot of people are watching it. And a uh, number of you have written to me about it, and so it's obvious that so many of you are watching, or at least have uh, grazed this show, that... Um, we should uh, get into this a little bit. There is a uh, like a little op-ed piece in the Toronto Star newspaper about the swan. And it's not the only one. Also, uh, USA Today wrote a scathing article ripping it. But um, let me read to you. This, th this particular op-ed piece is called Soul Destroying Reality TV Shows. And I'll read to you. This is from the Toronto Star. Morbid Fascination. That's what it is. Wednesday nights on the Fox Network, you can, if you are so inclined, watch women go under the plastic surgeon's knife and then go through grueling diet and exercise programs in an effort to win a chance to be a contestant in a beauty contest. The swan is soul-destroying stuff, 
and part of a growing trend of reality television that takes women and drives their self-image through a ringer washer. It's easy enough to take on reality shows to, here's the $10 word of the day, to wax stentorian about the way the broadcast world seems intent on recreating the late Roman Empire world of bread and circuses. By the way, people who watch a show like The Swan, they don't know what the word stentorian means, and they don't read pedantic discourse like this in a newspaper. They will not even see this criticism. They will not even know that anybody wrote this stuff. Okay. But shows, the story continues, shows like The Swan are, simply put, destructive. Destructive because they build on our culture of beauty is essential. Destructive because they say, if you don't fit the accepted mold of beauty, you should be ashamed. <laughs> well, I, I don't know who wrote this. There's uh, no byline on it. I don't understand why there's no byline on it. But um, may I just say that uh, the more beautiful you are, the more money you will make, the richer guys you will attract, the more stuff people will buy for you. Uh, there's just no two ways about it. And it, it, no amount of reassuring women on television is going to change that fact. Guys with money will get the 19-year-old tens. That's who gets those, okay? The, the, the guys with the most money get the hottest, youngest chicks. That's it. Simple as that. The more beautiful you are, the richer the guy you can attract. And, and uh, no amount of pontificating by a television critic or an editorial writer is going to change that. That's the way it is. He goes on to say the general message is that looking better, even if it means being carved into shape, makes a better person. Well, I don't know if that's really what it is. It just means you're a more saleable person. It means that the kind of guys you would want to go out with will start looking at you, which they won't if you're chunky or have bad teeth. They won't look at you, okay? And so by carving them into shape, these guys will look at you. Not meaning you're a better person, just means you're a more desirable person. That's all. You can be a wonderful person inside, but if you're not a wonderful person outside, guys won't look. Take it or leave. It says here, in the swan, that's the name of the show, Contestants are not allowed to see themselves until the so-called reveal, when a set of curtains is lifted and they are allowed a first glance at a mirror. Before that, the surgeons and trainers give punchy, upbeat vignettes about how well their patients responded to liposuction, nose jobs, breast enlargement, and a host of other invasive surgeries. Their delight in their own surgical skills is positively vulture-like. Meanwhile... If Thursday's reports from Montreal are accurate, remember this is the Toronto Star newspaper, one of Quebec's and Canada's most successful entertainment businesswomen has died during plastic surgery. Micheline Charest was 51 years old and reportedly passed away in a Montreal hospital Wednesday after being rushed there from a clinic. Didn't that also happen to the author of the First Wives Club recently? It did, didn't it? Charest was one of the founders of Cinar, the Quebec animation house that produces the children's Arthur series. 1998, she was the only Canadian to make it onto the Hollywood Reporter's list of the 50 most powerful women in entertainment. She ranked 19th. That's the other fact of it. Every kind of surgery carries risks. Another point is that looking good, no matter how it's achieved, doesn't necessarily solve anything. It often creates new doubts about a person's self-worth. Maybe you think the answer is that you don't have to watch the swan, that you can change the channel. But the message it says that everyone would be a better person all around if they just look better is horrible. Again, I think you're misinterpreting this. It is not that we think you're a better person. It is that we wouldn't mind seeing you naked if you're a better looking person. We wouldn't mind hooking up with you or maybe even marrying you, whereas before we would not have considered it. We know there are lots of wonderful people with hearts of gold. Lots of chicks who are just wonderful, but they've got hairy arms and frizzy hair and buck teeth. We know you're out there, girls. But we know that as long as um, you don't look hot the way we think you should look hot, we'll talk to you. You know, you'd make a good, um, uh, I don't know, um, employee maybe. Uh, you probably had spent a lot of time hitting the books. And so, therefore, you might be a good employee at the office. 
especially being that if you are unattractive, you're unlikely to get pregnant, you're probably likely to work late at the office, work more hours, you'd be a very good employee, but we would not marry you. That is the fact. The final uh, words of this uh, editorial, this op-ed piece, say, uh, and anyone involved from the producers to the surgeons to the viewers who push ratings high enough to keep the show on the air should be ashamed of the roles they have played in developing an ethos that can destroy other people's lives. Well, again, what do you think? It's all nines and tens watching these shows? Are you kidding me? I guarantee you, if you could see the average viewer, they're all hideous. The average viewer of this show is hideous because the dream of every hideous chick is that, that, that the fairy tale, the ugly duckling, one day she turns into, that's right, a swan. Exactly. That's the dream. That's the fantasy. That's what women want. And this TV show, like all good entertainment, does not create reality, does not tell people what to think. It simply acts as a mirror, the way our show does. It reflects what people's hopes and dreams are, what they want, how they feel, and there's nothing that any editorial writer can do to change that. That's how women feel. Ugly chicks would love to wake up beautiful one day. And for most of them, it will never happen. Now, that was the Toronto Star, USA Today, some of the same things here. Just briefly from the USA Today piece, Janet Jackson's breast reveal was tasteless. The swan is obscene. In its second episode, the swan updates Queen for a Day by making surgically supplied... But does anybody out there remember Queen for a Day? TV show from like the 50s? No, I didn't think so. By making surgically supplied beauty the prize that solves all problems. Each week, two swan-declared ugly ducklings hand themselves over to an array of Dr. Frankensteins who rearrange their faces, fix their teeth, suck out their fat, and lead them to the promised land of TV-defined self-esteem. Until they reach the end of each hour when one is sent packing, having changed, but alas, not enough, the other goes on to the series-ending pageant, scheduled for May, during Sweet Month, of course, whose winner will be declared The Swan. This is what I love. Here, here's the part about this show that I love. There you have the true sick glory of the concept. We convince these women their self-worth is wrapped up in their physical appearance. All to them. To meet some unspecified standard of beauty. And then tell all but one, sorry, you're still not worthy enough. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> the show, of course, it says here, supplies a therapist. Which makes everything all right because we know how swiftly and surely game show therapy works. It's probably an unintended bonus that these therapeutic revelations of doubt and pain also serve to ratchet up the show's emotional content. <laughs> I, I'm just amazed that people get so pissed about this. You know, I'm sorry. That's the way it is. The more beautiful you are, the more successful you're going to be, the richer the man you're going to marry, the more bills you're going to get paid, the more likely it is you'll be driving in a nice car. Ugly women, fat women, hairy women, they're the, guy, they're the women who marry the $28,000 a year guys. I don't know who the guy is standing in front of Quiznos dressed as a giant Diet Pepsi, but I'm telling you, that guy is not married to a tech. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. The guy over at Highland, is it Highland and Sunset? In front of the Subway sandwich shop dressed as a Subway sandwich? Uh, no, it's um, El Centro. It's El Centro and uh, Hollywood. That's where it is. The guy is dressed as a Subway sandwich, stood up on its end with a leaf of lettuce that looks supposed to look like his hair, standing up out of the top of the sandwich, and he's waving everyone into the parking lot. That guy is not married to a 9 or a 10, okay? The, the, the fat, chunky, homely, hairy chicks out there, that's who they get. They get the guy who stands out of the street handing you a little business card saying, hey, check it out, check it out, check it out. That's who that guy gets. Okay? The guy who's selling uh, E. coli sausages outside Staples Center, I'm telling you, he's not married to a 9 or a 10. He's, he's with somebody, but she's not a 9 or she's not an 8. She's probably not a 7. Guys who didn't study hard or work hard, that's who these women get. That's the reality. So what if there's a TV show that tells women if they get plastic surgery, they will be uh, seen in uh, much higher, uh, uh, they'll be held much higher esteem. It's true. It's true. Now, I hate reality shows. I've stopped watching. I know everyone's watching The Apprentice and everyone's watching, um, 
extreme makeover and all these stupid shows. I, you know, TV has become just a wash and makeover shows and reality shows, and I can't stand it. But to criticize, the, you know, it's just another stupid reality show, of course. But to criticize the show for these reasons is ridiculous. Because these shows work when they reflect the way people really feel. Is there something wrong with that? It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Right, there's a reality show on Fox called The Swan. And on the show, they take all these um, homely, chunky chicks, sometimes with bad teeth and everything, and they just, like, give them all the surgery and liposuction they need to turn them from so-called ugly ducklings into so-called swan. And that, after these chicks have been through this whole self-esteem ordeal, then they are put into a beauty pageant <laughs> where they get to compete with each other to see who wins. So then you'll pick one who's the most beautiful, and then the rest all go home and they get their self-esteem kicked again. Hey, women are volunteering to go on. How can you blame uh, Fox for putting it on? I, you know, what the hell? I hate reality shows, but uh, what the hell? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Vince on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today? Oh, I'm okay, Vince. Good. Hey, you know, I, you hit, a, you hit a, a, a funny thing with this topic. You know, these swans, you know, they're talking about their low self-esteem and whatnot. They go and make themselves pretty, then they hook up with this guy of their dreams. They already know what the self-esteem, you know, issues that they've had. What about when they have offspring and the poor kid has their genetics that are screwed up from eons back? They're going to think, Gee, Yeah, that's the thing nobody ever thinks about when they get plastic surgery. So what are the children going to look like? They've got to look like you used to look. Exactly. Why would you inflict those kids on the world? Especially, and not only inflict them on the world, but put them through what you've already been through. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, anyway, take me out with a bong hit, Tom. Keep up the good work. <laughs> okay, here you go, Vince. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom, dude. I remember the first day in Seattle. I was twelve years old, and I heard you. Wow. Yeah, this is our tenth year on the Buzz. Absolutely. That was a great day. But hey, dude, I got a problem with the show, man. I'm a loyal Likas listener, but one point, those girls already have boyfriends and/or husbands. So those women, you know, they're already with men. So those, they've accepted the fact that they got a guy who either loves them or wants to do them or whatever. They should accept that, yeah, they're not the hottest chicks in the world, but at least they got a guy. And, you know, it would be better if the show was like, I want to be good to get laid or something like that. You know what I mean? Well, that's probably what they would do with guys. But with guys, you don't have to give them plastic surgery. You just have to give them a big bank account. Oh, well, true. But if it was like a show where let me get hot so I can get a guy to pay for my bills, you know, then it would be a good well, that's the part you're not going to see when they dump their current boyfriends. Because uh, now they can do much better. One of the rare times in life a woman could trade up. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yes it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, we're talking about this TV show, The Swan. It's a reality show. And on this reality show, yes, they take uh, homely chicks and use uh, plastic surgery, liposuction, dentistry to make them look hot. And then they compete in a beauty pageant. And then they um, they pick one and reject all the rest. <laughs> You know, if this was so bad for women, why would so many of them sign up? For God's sake. Let's say hi here to Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how we doing, buddy? Hi, Jeff. Well, I'm in my bedroom packing to go out of town, and I walk through the living room, and my wife is watching the swan. And I hear on the screen, hey, every time I hit the punching bag, I think of my ex-husband. And it's the girl, like, training for the show. Uh-huh. And I just start dying laughing. And she's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm in the bedroom packing. He probably dumped it because she got fat. <laughs> but you know what? These 
these girls that hook up, you were talking earlier about all the people that hook up with the guys that are outside of Subway, blah, 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 yeah. right? And uh, I think that what you got to remember about these ugly chicks is they're insanely better in certain areas than these nine or tens you're talking about. Oh, ugly chicks, uh, I, especially fat chicks. I, you know, I've always said Absolutely. on the show, fat chicks love to eat. Absolutely. Well, they love to do other things, too, which they... they well, they'll do anything they because you... They, that's right. They have to make up for it. They'll do anything your hot girlfriend won't do. That's exactly right. But the other thing is that my wife actually is a nine. She is a nine? She is. So you must make a uh, six-figure income at least. Uh, well, you know, I do well. I well, do well. Of course you do. But I, you know, I have... You couldn't get a nine unless you lied about it. And, uh, well, this is the thing. You're, the the swan is not just for ugly chicks. It's for people that might be hot but don't really know they're hot, and that's kind of the, where where my wife sits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's good. By the way, this uh, this one chick on the swan because I was kind of peeking at it while I'm doing the show. Right. Uh, this one chick on the swan. They were talking about how she used to have to shave her facial hair with a razor. Oh my God. And she would get five o'clock stubble. <laughs> Tell her to get the Mach 3. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> she will have it for about 24 hours. Oh, my God. What about these chicks who have sideburns? This chick has sideburns, for God's sake. It's ridiculous. It really is. It's absolutely out of control, all these shows. I'm I'm dying laughing about it <laughs> listening to your show. Man, you're <laughs> and what's amazing is if it's so insulting to women, why do these shows have such big ratings? Uh, well, that's the whole thing is these women sit around watching them going, I could do that. That's right. I could do that. That's right. And it's it's funny. It is funny. I know I'm laughing. I know I'm laughing too, buddy. <laughs> Love your show. Take me out with the bong hit, buddy. Here you go, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to George on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hi, George. I've listened to you for about six months now. I'm 50 years old. I live in Baltimore. And I've enjoyed your show. I actually, I agree with some of the things that you have to say. But at, at sometimes I wonder, you seem to be bitter about women. You seem to, like, want to use once, throw away kind of mentality. And a lot of your listeners kind of have that same approach. Well, that's, that's, I wonder why that is kind of the approach of young men. I don't know if you've noticed this, George. Yeah, actually, you're right. That is the approach of young men. And so our show accurately reflects the way young men think, doesn't it? Yeah, and I, I think you should you should celebrate um, the good side of men. men uh, no, no, I cel you know what I celebrate? I celebrate accurately reflecting the way people feel, because that's how you get the highest ratings, by being but, real. But, Tom, I mean, how old are you? It doesn't matter how old I am. Everyone knows how old I am. It's irrelevant. You're probably my age. I mean, come on. We've been around the block. And you know what? Uh, I, you know, we don't, in my life, I have been happiest. I have been happiest uh, when I have had women and uh, used them for what I could use them for and then drop kicked them to the uprights. See, I'm not happy with that. I'm happy with intimacy. I, I enjoy a time well, with them. Well, that's wonderful. Enjoying, you should call your local Christian radio station and you should uh, celebrate that with them. Christian radio? What are you talking about? Well, that's I'm the kind of thing they talk about. I have sex twice a day with my girlfriend. I, I'm dating a hot 40 year old and we have sex twice a day. Well,. There's and no tens so who are 40 hot. years old, as you know. She called you last week, by the way, and you said she was bitter. I'm telling you, she's not bitter. Oh, so she called, and now you're calling on her behalf. Yeah, she is fantastic, man. You you know what? You have no clue. Really? Well, again. You don't have a clue. Uh, you know what? Uh, if I don't have a clue, you have to ask why so many men out there tune into this show, because why the ratings are, are so high. Well, you I. Are, you and your listeners are Neanderthals. Great, but you know what? You're not even in the target demographic of the show. We don't really care if you like it. Yeah, I don't care about you because you are clueless. Now, I'm not clueless because I have the number one show. I, I'm, I'm, I, if I were right, clueless, I and I see why you're I, oh, I'm, I'm homely. That's why I'm on the radio. Everybody on the radio is homely. That's the way it is. Now, uh, talk me. Go ahead. I'll... Oh, don't worry. I'm a professional. And you know what, pal? You're not sophisticated enough to know that when I'm tired of talking to you, when you serve my purpose, I'll press the button and you'll be gone. You have no idea. I am so far beyond you. Oh, you're not beyond anything, pal, because you know why? Because you're down there calling me, and I'm here at the radio station. Women, have I'm making money listening to you blather on. 
You are lost, man. I'm not lost, pal. I, 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 I'm making a seven-figure income talking to morons like you. It's unbelievable. Oh, I'm a moron. Oh, yes. Yes, you are. It means nothing. Hang on a second there, George. Aaron, what do you want to say to George here? About growth. Hey, George, this is the Tom Likas show, not the gay hotline, okay? <laughs> You guys, you're such Neanderthals. <laughs> you have no concept. About, man? Wait till you're 50 years old and you appreciate talking to a woman who has something to offer you, and you and you're and you're into growth and helping people and working together as a couple. Are, are, are you 50? Because your voice sounds pretty prepubescent. I'm 50 years old. I work out every day, though. I mean, I get I get comments. Yeah, I, I knew it. Gay. You go to the gym so you can check out the guys, man. Yeah, that you have to say I'm gay because you can't accept that I know something that you don't. Oh, I like intimacy so you have and to put I me like down. to be touched and held. Yeah, you I guys love have to put me, me down because you can't accept it. Go back to your mama. Go you back to your mama. That some guy get out here the, knows more than get you Get off the nip and go back to your mama, okay? You guys are so worthless. You have no idea. You what guys are lost. About worthless? I'm a multimillionaire. I'm the most, Tom, worthless, Tom. I'm the most worthless rich guy you've ever talked to. Tom, so yeah, you are. I'm making um, six figures a year. Money means nothing, Tom. That's what it's people say who don't have any. No, money it's is about everything. Growth. I'll start to show you money growth. Take everything. a look at my bank account. I'll show you growth. I don't care about growth. I don't care about your money. Man. I know you don't because you don't have my money. Life. Hey, what have you learned from your friends and from women? I've learned a lot. What have you learned? Tell me one thing that you learned. From I, women. I, I, you I have learned that, that, that wasting time about. listening to women blab on about stuff I don't care about uh, is just that, wasting my time. So, so women are only good for their vagina? Is that it? Well, that's certainly one of the top two. So then you are lost, pal. You got a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot to learn. Really? Well, that's I, what yeah, guys I, say. I encourage you to look inside. That's what guys say who can't get chicks in their 20s. I would look. I would encourage you to look inside yourself and see what women have to I, offer. I, you know I mean, what? I don't want to look inside myself. I want to look between some thighs. Hello in there. See what yeah. women who know what they're doing in life, who have something that help you learn about yourself. Uh, th no, I don't need to hear women nagging and harassing me and uh, browbeating me about stuff. Are you kidding me? I give you that. And I know that uh, all the men that. out there, including uh, Aaron and everybody else, they know that uh, what I'm talking about. Hey, I give you that. I don't want women that nag you. And that's what most American women, women are all you about. know what they're about, and there's a I, lot of them out there. There's and a woman that nags on the right now. now. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think you're right, Aaron. women out there. <laughs> yeah, we're and not looking for intelligent women, women, Aaron. We're looking with, for women with nice knockers that don't sag. Hey, hey Tom, 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 let me tell you something. My girlfriend and I have sex twice a day. Because I know as dumb as they come, they're so hot. And that's all I care about. I work my butt off to make as much money as I can so I can get the hottest chick possible. That's all that matters. I don't hey, care Tom, if she knows about Tom, science and physics. It's Tom, irrelevant. you and I are in the same age group, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, pal, I've got a hot 40-year-old girlfriend. We have sex twice pal, a day. you know what, though? The, the bottom line is 40-year-old. 40 40-year-old 40 girlfriend. She you know what? Hot, Can I tell you something? I really couldn't care less about your 40-year-old girlfriend. When you have a girlfriend in her 20s, you let me know. <laughs> Like his show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Josh. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay, Josh. Hey, man. That that fifty year old man is just jealous that he can't get any twenty year old girls. Of course. So what? He has sex twice a day with a, an old bag. Please. <laughs> He's hilarious. I mean, he says he goes to the gym and yeah, of course he checks out the men and he doesn't care about money, man. He's just totally jealous of you, Tom. I know. Because you're the man. Thank you so much. You are the man. I've been listening to you for a while. Your advice is great. And uh, it all it lives in the times of today. You know, that guy's living in the damn 60s. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, that's Neanderthals, all of you. You're Neanderthals. Yeah, he's thinking barefoot and pregnant, and that's about it. Yeah, but... I know. <laughs> I know. There he is with the, at the gym with his uh, saggy girlfriend. <laughs> Wonderful, Tom. Hey, take me out with a big bong rip, followed by the THX. Here you go, Josh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. It's Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Matt. Hey, how you doing, man? Do you care? Of course I do. Doing great. Good. Hey, uh, I want to talk about this whole reality TV show thing. Um, it, it See, the thing that's surprising to me isn't necessarily that, uh, like, I don't quite approve of all these uh, the messages that they send on these reality TV shows, but the thing is, is I don't understand why 
uh, these people expect the networks to live by some, uh, you know, underlying code of ethics that, you know, is meant to enrich our everyday lives. Well, uh, not only that, the most successful shows are the ones that uh, reflect our dirtiest, deepest, darkest secrets. The ones that reflect the way we really feel. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, you got, like you have Survivor, you have people whoring themselves out, you know, just as far as, you know, what is the, the furthest thing they would do for money, you know, each day, you know, on a daily basis. You got uh, the Swan, and, you know, of, of course, you know, the the you know ethics that it teaches aren't quite you know what you'd consider to be upstanding but you know it sells you know i think we're just probably you know a hairpin away from you know getting uh you know ex-cons to just beat each other up on uh you know national television because i know people would tune in for that and and women love seeing other women getting beaten up and that that's why shows like these do so well sarah on the tom like show How's it going? Okay. I just, uh, just first time I've ever heard your show. My sister, uh, my uh, friend, goes on and on about your show and how you beat women up, and but she, you know, she thinks it's great. And uh, I was just hearing about how you guys were talking about that Swan show, which I saw for a short bit. And I thought it was disgusting because I don't think that if you're not enough without plastic surgery, you're never going to be enough with it. But it's hilarious to hear you talk about how people actually are and how women can be extremely shallow, a lot more shallow than I think men ever could. And uh, so that's why I call in and, and, and talk to you and uh, let you know that I think it, it's awesome to hear you talk about those kind of stuff. Well, not to mention the fact women love seeing other women get beaten down. Uh, women love to beat down other women. That's why they watch beauty pageants. That's why they watch these reality shows. Because women love to sit there and go, look at her, look at him, look at her. Oh, or the oh, apprentice, oh, look, this one's being too sexy, using her sex appeal. Isn't that no, disgusting? If they, slut, if they call them a slut, they don't care that they're a slut. They're pissed off that they don't look like them. That's exactly what it is. It's just jealousy. That's exactly what it is. Women love carving other women up. That's why women love watching these kinds of reality shows. The Tom Like is Show, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Ryan on the Tom Like is Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ryan. Hello, uh, pretty good. Saw you up here at Portland. I ran into you at the City Grill on Saturday night. Oh, had a good time. Oh, uh, it was a good time. Hey, uh, you know what I think that they should do with all the losers on the show is uh, reverse all the surgery. <laughs> Send them back to being hideous. That's right. They should do the lipo injection. Lipo injection. <laughs> Give them back the buck teeth. Yeah, pull, <laughs> pull the caps out. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, hey, can you take me out with a bong hit and a thank you, Jesus? Of course I can. Here you. you go. Jesus. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Tina on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 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 Tina. Tina. Yeah. Want to warn all uh, husbands and boyfriends: never buy your girlfriends or wives boobs. No. They will leave you. Yeah. Oh, I, I have no doubt about that. Uh, the, you, if you don't like your uh, woman's breasts before you uh, get with her, uh-huh. uh huh. Go be with someone who has the breasts you want. Uh, I know this because I did it. You did it. <laughs> you, your boyfriend or your husband, who was it, got you the boob? Husband. Your husband got you a boob job. Yes. I and suddenly that. you had all this new confidence. Yeah. And guys kept looking at you. Well, no. I, I said. Well, I said I just wanted to look proportionate, and uh, that's what women always say. I just want to look better in a dress. And I had really wide shoulders, and I had like a B cup. And I said, I'm going to be a full C, because Howard Stern said, I like a C cup. And so I said, uh, so I need to move up to a C. And then I did that, and I paid half, and he paid half. And about six months later, we were divorced. <laughs> uh huh. And you're proud of it. Look at you. <laughs> well. Uh, so did you go right out and bang somebody right after that, or what happened? Uh, pretty soon. Pretty soon after that. Even had you told your husband, oh, I just want to look proportionate. Yeah. Yeah, which is what every woman says. Yeah. Yeah, you have to marry somebody with breasts you like, boys. If you don't, jump her and find somebody with the breasts you do like. Don't ever get a boob job for these chicks. Never improve the appearance of a chick you're with, because she will think that she can do better than you. 
Well, it did increase my confidence. And I was uh, walking around with the little uh, crop tops and uh, no bra. And uh, I was feeling good about myself. But uh, bet you were. Thanks, Tom. Oh, Tina, I'm here to help. Thank you. And that voice, I think that tells you everything you need to know. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. That's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1.